All right, we have come to 1944, and the Russians are now pushing the Germans and their allies out of the Soviet Union. Not only do they attack the Baltic Peninsula during 1944, they also attack the south, going through the Balkans and straight through the middle, through the Ukraine, toward Czechoslovakia and Germany. Poland is overrun, and quite quickly, the Axis begins to fall apart. Throughout 1944, there was also battles in Italy, and by the time the uh, year 1943 was over, the war in Italy looked terrible for the Axis. The Allies were also gaining um, in the Pacific, and we'll talk more about that, and it just was not a good situation for the, the Axis. However, it eventually got worse. up till now, the Allies were operating in Italy and in Great Britain. However, the rest of Europe was basically closed off. Though the Russians were advancing somewhat through here, it was very still um, quite far from the Germans. But now, American, Canadian, Australian, Free French, Polish, British, New Zealand, New Zealanders, Dutch, Norwegians, all sorts of people would land at Normandy during the D-Day invasion on June 6th, 1944. And that is one of the most famous battles in the history of the world. Here one of the most famous photos of that battle, Allied troops landing on the distant beaches of Normandy. Though it was a hard fight and a costly battle, it was a victory for the Allies who managed to grab hold of the beaches of northern France. They continued on led by General Dwight D. Eisenhower until they came to the Belgian border or thereabouts. American troops continued, Allied troops continued moving across northern France, moving on towards Belgium and Luxembourg, when suddenly there was a massive German counterattack in the Ardennes um, woods, the forests of Ardennes and Belgium and Luxembourg and and eastern France. Was, the battle that was fought here was called the Battle of the Bulge because it made a huge bulge in the Allied line which was eventually, um, though painstakingly, put back together. Fighting continued throughout most of the winter of 1944 through 1945 and here German troops are in action in the Ardennes woods. So we had gone from northern France and right about here the Battle of the Bulge is fought, but soon Allied troops crossed into Germany, crossing the Rhine in early 1945. Meanwhile the red flag was flying high in Berlin, the capital of Germany, and Hitler committed suicide. This being the red flag the hammer and sickle and star being the symbol of the communist ideology and on a red black backdrop. Soviet soldiers hung the flag, Soviet flag over Berlin just as American troops were approaching. Here US and Soviet troops met in the East-West meeting that symbolized the end of the war in Europe. The war would continue on for a few more months until about September in the Pacific, but it ended in May in Europe with the defeat of Germany and the Axis powers. It's ironic that this picture should show up in this video, for we're not only talking about the end of World War II, but what happened after World War II. This photo shows American 
on the left and a Soviet on the right, embracing as they think about all the fighting that they've gone through together now as allies and friends. However, it will only be a matter of months and years before these two men turn enemies. The U.S. and the Soviet Union soon became arch rivals in the war that, although it never actually was declared, is still um, dealing with the aftermath today, the Cold War. World War II was directly connected to the Cold War, as Germany was divided in all of Europe, actually, at that. An Iron Curtain was smashed down as a scar across Europe and across the world, and soon there would be complete rivalry between the U.S., United States, and the Soviet Union, the two great superpowers.